This is a brief history of Stockport by Olivia Broughton, Thomas Howdle, Tyler Mace and Janny Young. This video outlines the brief history of the development of Stockport with reference to the economic geology. Stockport in the 1840s was a small town surrounded by fields. Just over 100 years later, urbanisation has caused Stockport to explode in size, replacing the natural landscape that surrounds it. The raw materials in the subsurface in this area have allowed for the growth of the city. Quarries were vital in the growth of Stockport. There are a number of sandstone quarries outside of Stockport appearing in the 1890s. Sandstone would have been used as bricks for building. The close-up image shows the location of four sandstone quarries situated on a hill called Toppert Hill. They are conveniently located next to two large railways, making it easier for transporting the mined sandstone. 100 years later, in the 1990s, we discover that the quarries have been filled in and converted to farmland and orchards. The surrounding land has become more developed with lots of housing replacing the fields. This is another example of the many land use changes. The screenshot on the left from the 1890s shows a single house surrounded by a small forest. Only 10 years later, in the same area, the railway has grown larger and the forest has been replaced by an engineering works, houses and a school. Stockport has a rich history in coal mining. Over 100 different coal mines were opened up in and around Stockport since 1556. However, none remain today. A colliery is simply just a coal mine and its surrounding buildings. Some of Stockport's and Cheshire's most productive collieries were Bredbury, Chisworth, Denton and Bents Lane. In their peak, each of these mines would produce up to 120,000 tonnes of coal a year for heating, transport and other requirements around the UK. Bredbury Colliery was one of the largest mines in the northwest. Records show that the first attempts at coal, re coal recovery from this seam was in 1598. Over the course of its 359 year life, nine different pits were opened up to excavate the Black Diamond in this area. The pit was most active between 1896 and 1908, with the peak of coal production being recorded in the early 1900s, approximately 400 tonnes per day. Nowadays, all that is left of Bredbury are the inaccessible shafts below ground as any surface remains were destroyed by explosives in 1961. Denton Colliery was Stockport's most successful colliery in terms of coal production. The earliest recording of any possible coal recovery from this site is in 1556, when a request was put in to the local council at the time for the acquisition of land for coal recovery. By the 1740s, records show the land and shafts were constantly flooding, this bringing the name Wet Earth Colliery to be applied to Denton. In 1871, the Denton Colliery Company was formed. This colliery is situated very close to the main railway line connecting Stockport with Manchester and beyond, and is the reason for this train line running through Denton today. In 1929, the company that owned the colliery liquidated, leaving behind 70 properties, many of them miners' cottages. Today, all that is left of this once great coal mine and refinery plant is the old mining office, now converted into a real estate agent's. In the 1840s, only one railway line travels through Stockport. It's Stockport's connection to Manchester. A new railway line can be seen in the 1890s, travelling into Stockport from the west, shown by the Green Arrow. The train station is in the centre of town and circled in red. Aspects of the 1840s map, and therefore the railway line, are missing. This makes it unclear as to whether the train line has always split in three directions south of the city or if it was a development between the 1840s and 1890s. The complexity of the railway lines continued to develop. Another line was added between the 1890s and the 1910s, travelling between the southeast and the northwest of Stockport. A more detailed map in the 1970s shows how the train station has grown in size and has several different platforms. Today, Stockport train station has six platforms. The motorway was another recent development, aiding Stockport's connections to other cities. The M6 motorway began construction in the 1960s and took approximately 40 years to complete. It can first be seen on a map in the 1970s shown by red circles, resembling the beginning of construction. The route follows the M60 today, which is pointed to by the red arrow on the contemporary map. In conclusion, there have been many changes to Stockport over the past 100 years or so. The main changes include those to the landscape, housing and transport links around the city. 
These developments could not have occurred without the coal mining industry and the sandstone quarry.